back to the channel. My name is Jennifer and in today's video I will be giving you some tips on how to bike with your dog safely and have some fun. Uh, but before we get into that I just wanted to go over a few of the tools that I use. I like to use a harness. It is the most comfortable and safest unit for your dog to use uh, rather than just a collar. So if you are using a harness try it or even if you have to buy one yet um, try to get one that has D-rings on the sides as well as the top, okay? So uh, the side ones are really helpful if you're going to be doing anything that is beside your dog. So if you're biking with your dog on the left, you're going to be using the D-ring that's on his right or her right, okay? So having those D-rings that are on the sides are very helpful if you're biking with your dog. I also chose this one because it has some nice padding and gives the dog a lot of room for the legs to move back and forth. In addition to the harness, I still use a collar uh, because I like to also use a leash. So just in case a D-ring breaks, then you still have control of your dog. You have a dog on a collar and a leash combo. So this isn't actually used to slow down or speed up your dog. Uh, it's just there as a safety mechanism. I uh, highly recommend it. Um, as far as the leash goes, I like to use a short, thin leash. This one's only four feet long, just because holding on to it is just much lighter and easier. It's less cumbersome. If you're new at riding with your dog, I do recommend wearing, using a halty, which slips over the nose. Uh, that can be helpful just in using the leash and the halty combo to steer your dog's nose away from uh, a squirrel or a bunny or whatever is exciting your dog. And we used the halty for probably the first 10 rides and now we don't need to anymore. But um, it's good for a tool for a short period of time and now we don't need it, so that's good. Uh, so in addition to these tools, I also use the Bike Toe Leash, and that is the name of it, Bike Toe Leash. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll link the video up above. So yeah, during the ride today, I'll be throwing out some tips. Um, maybe, I don't know how many, five, six, seven, eight, I haven't decided. We're going to get suited up and get ready for the ride. See you in a few. Levi is ready to go, yeah. Okay, so this is the bike toe leash as described in my previous video. So I just store it with the end hooked onto my seat. So I usually walk uh, with him beside me as we get towards the sidewalk and then I hook him up. Okay, I think we're still recording everywhere. So I've got my bike leaning up against me, put him on the side D-ring closest to me. Got him on leash. He's already scooping out for squirrels. We'll wait for this. Yes. to run full out. Right off the bat. You gotta watch for traffic. Whoa. Whoa. We'll wait for everybody. Alright, let's go. All right, so tip number one, let your dog run as fast as it wants to if you're going on a flat line. It's got a lot of energy to expend. If he's going too fast, you can always put the brakes on. Just kind of graze those brakes a little bit. We're gonna go left. 
Whoa, whoa. Levi, left, left. Good boy. So tip number two, the first one doesn't really count. Of course your dog's gonna wanna go fast. So really, tip number one, teach your dog a word for left and a word for right. I use left for left and I use this way for right. It works for us. I do recommend that you teach your dog those words when you're, on, when you're walking as opposed to going fast speed. Let's go. So once your dog knows the words for left and right when you're walking, you can try it if you're if you run with your dog, try it when you're running, and then use them when you're biking. Going left is much harder than going right because you have to cross in front of your dog. Tip number two, when you're going past parked cars, always give yourself enough room that is going to allow for an open door to be open in front of you so you don't get doored, that'd be bad. Whoa, whoa, stop. Busy today. Let's go. All right, so you might not be able to tell from here, but we have a downhill coming. So another tip, I think we're at tip number three. Just put a little bit of the brakes on as you go downhill. So your dog doesn't start running out of control and trip. That would be bad. So just put the brakes on to slow them down a little bit. Okay, Levi, let's go left. Left, Levi. Left, good boy. Left, good boy. Yes. Passing animals. Some dogs are very reactive to animals, whether it be other dogs, uh, cats, raccoons, squirrels. If a squirrel is passing in front of you quite closely, that's probably the most dangerous. You need to be ready for braking, but you don't want to slam the brakes on. So you have to be, I mean, it might just pass by. If the squirrel is beside you, speed up. Keep it moving forward. Whoa. Left, Levi, left. Good boy. So basically, if there's animals on either side of you that are causing interest from your dog, speed up a little bit. Keep them interested in moving forward. Another tip, I think, it, what is it? Tip number five? Maybe. Let your dog dictate the pace. Don't force your dog to go faster than he wants to. Usually the gait is a longer stride when he's wanting to really run, right? Um, when you notice that the gate starts to shorten up, it's more of a canter. So don't force him to run when he wants to canter. Usually there's two or three waves of uh, wanting to run full out. I tried to keep the runs to uh, 20 to 30 minutes. So he'll easily cover five to seven K in that time. He's not by any means exhausted after that, but he's certainly satisfied. We are going downhill, but I've got the brakes on, so it's all under control. 
you notice how it's starting to go more into a canter, he's wanting to slow down a little bit. to the temperature. If it's warm out, your dog's not going to want to run as fast or for as long. Now every dog has a different uh, temperature level where they really slow down. Of course the older the dog, the sooner it is. Uh oh, we have a kitty cat. A kitty cat right in front of us. I've got the brakes on. Over here, Levi. This cat has a death sentence. We're just gonna stop and wait for it to cross. Look at this guy. No, kitty cat, no, don't come here. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 Levi. So I'm just gonna walk along here with the bike. Cat's on the one side, dog's on the other. But he can't get there. Nope, Levi, come on. This way. Get under here, come on. Let's go. Okay, can we get going now? Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, that was a bit crazy. He's still super excited about that cat. Nah. So the cat wanted to be friends, but Levi is not a cat friend. So basically what happened there, I don't know if you could tell, because I was worried more about the dog. But basically, I stopped. I stood over the bike. The cat was on the right side. Levi was on the left. And then Levi started walking backwards to the back wheel, which is fine, but it sort of changes the leverage of things. And of course the cat's still walking towards him. So I had to pull him to the front. Pull him more to the side, but facing the front. And, uh, and get riding. Oh, wait. we're gonna stop here. Whoa, stop. Go ahead. Okay. In we go. Come on in, Levi. I cannot believe my phone is still here. <laughs> yeah.